So in this video, I want to talk about being selfish, being what I call healthy selfish, learning to take care of you first, making you number one so that you can totally be present for her so that you can actually attract her and turn her on. Now, this may seem like an oxymoron, but the more you get it, the more you understand it, the more you realize this actually makes her feel safe, makes her happy, and actually makes you happier too. And if you stay till the end, I'm going to share one story that really illustrates this and brings it all home, puts it all together for you so you can understand how to implement this in your life right away. Now, before we get started, I want you to check out my book, The Art of Fearless Seduction. This is about the beingness qualities of a masculine man, a powerful man, but this is, is a seducer. It's not a how-to book, but it's more of a treatment in changing your subconscious, the way you feel, the way you move before you even walk talk and express yourself. It helps you to get down qualities like groundedness, understanding what it is to open your heart, understanding what it is to feel like a sexy bastard before you even move, how to turn on, turn on and have sexual turn on in a conversation from feeling before you even say a word too. So there's a lot more than that. Make sure to check out the book, The Art of Fearless Seduction. We'll put it in the video somewhere and uh, there'll be a link. Make sure to go to it right away. Now with that said, let's dive right in. So number one, can you turn away? Can you actually let her go? What I mean by this is nice guys are always hovering. There's a sense they're always checking out her subcommunication. If she's sitting next to me, there's a sense I'm aware of what she's feeling, where she's at, and if I feel her pull away, there's a sense that we're constantly worried about what she's feeling and we wanna pull her back in. We wanna get that validation. It makes us feel really good. And a lot of nice guys say that I like to get the validation because I like to make people happy. It's part of what makes me happy. Well, the problem with that is if you're not selfish and you don't know how to make yourself happy first, then you're going to have a hard time really making her happy. Matter of fact, you're going to start to annoy her and drive her nuts. If you constantly need her to be happy for you to be happy, then you're actually going to make yourself miserable. So I really want to uh, preface this with the ability to entertain yourself. That's number one, is really being able to self-entertain. So when I'm out with a, with a beautiful woman, every once in a while I disconnect from her and I check in. I enjoy something on my own, a piece of artwork, uh, nature, um, a dog walking down the street. I love animals. Um, I sing myself a song and I just let her go for a little bit. And then I see, does it bother me? Am I, con am I wanting something from her? If it does, I completely ground myself out and let her go. I process that energy out of my body. And then when I come back to her, I come back inviting her into my energy versus me trying to get something from her. And what this does, it's, it's really almost amazing. When I get selfish, healthy selfish, when I learn to take care of me, she starts to lean into me more because she can feel that I don't need her, so she wants to give me energy. That's when you really can enjoy validation. That's when you just let it in, let it soak into your body, and you enjoy her presence with you. But if she pulls away, let's say she sees an old friend and she starts to get excited and she, you feel her energy roll, move right towards that friend, as nice guys, we often get a little worried, especially if it's a guy or something like that. And can you just ground and let that go for a minute? And you, if you stay open, connected, selfish, self-entertaining, she's going to come back to you. This doesn't mean that you completely reject her. You're still open to her. You're still aware she's there. You're just not taking it personal. So you learn to really take care of you first. So that's number one. Number two, can you disagree with her or can you say no? If she says she wants to go to this restaurant, can you say, you know, I really don't want that restaurant tonight. I'd rather go here. Or if she says, it'd be really cool if we saw this movie, can you disagree with her and say, no, but I'm really excited about this film. I've been waiting for it for a while without feeling guilty or ashamed. See, a lot of guys, when they disagree or agree to disagree, they feel guilty, they feel ashamed. You too can like two different things and you can choose the restaurant tonight. She can choose the restaurant next time and vice versa. But if you're always handing it to her, then you're handing the power to her. Otherwise you feel guilty, then there's a problem in that. So practice saying no. Practice saying no when you really wanna say no. Don't just bite the bullet, build resentment because resentment's the death of all relationships long-term. Long-term built-up resentment kills every relationship. And practice saying no once in a while. And go out there and have a great time. Go out, if there's a movie you really want to see, say, babe, I really want to see this movie. We'll go to your movie next time. Or there's this great restaurant, let's try it out. And 
learn to be okay disagreeing. Learn to say no. Learn to set boundaries. Really, really important. Take care of you and she will be much happier. Matter of fact, women hate it when men can't say no, when men can't disagree, when men can't challenge them. It's a huge piece of the equation to be able to challenge her. And sometimes just challenging her for fun and teasing and in playing is really important. Um, I also have a video on pushes. You can look that up in YouTube on pushes, teasing. It's actually push-pull. And it's so powerful to be able to do the pushes. Most guys are constantly giving compliments because they want validation because they're nice guys. But Deep down inside, if you learn to push, you learn to say no, you learn to tease, you learn to banter, you learn to disagree, and you don't feel guilty, you have fun with it, she's going to have fun too, and she's going to respect you more. And next is number three. But before we dive into number three, I want to invite you to like, subscribe, to hit that bell notification, to share, and to help us grow the channel. Because as the channel grows, we can bring you more and more content. We're working really hard right now at kind of reinventing the channel a little bit. So you're going to see some fluctuations and stuff. And when we get it right, you're going to watch this channel explode. So work with us on this. Help us to share. Help us to grow the channel. Help us hit that 100,000 mark and watch as we continue to bring you better and better content. Also, make sure to put comments in the video. We love those comments. I figure out new videos for you all the time from the comments. And we want to help you be the best version of yourself possible. So with that said, let's dive back in. Number three. Now, this is a big one. This is a beautiful one. And when I had this realization, it was huge for me. And I'm going to get into a story in a little bit. I, I referenced that earlier. If you stay to the end, I'm going to get into a story about this. But this was huge for me. Can you let her be in a bad mood? This doesn't mean you don't want to cheer her up. You wouldn't love to see her cheered up. It wouldn't make you feel good to see her cheered up. But you don't need her to cheer up for you to feel good. This is huge. And when I had this realization, my whole life changed. I began to see women in life differently. When I was out on a date, if she was grumpy in that moment or something pissed her off, I began to, yeah, create a space, a container for her to relax into, to be grumpy in, but I stopped trying to fix her or change her. I just grounded and I did my thing. I had fun, I invited her into my reality. And what I found was that she often would come out of her bad mood much faster than if I tried to do something to fix her. And she would shift faster when I stayed in this high, for lack of a better term, high vibrational, high emotional state, having fun, staying happy, and just continually played with her and invited her into it. And I had to, at that moment, the moment I realized that I had to release the guilt of not trying to save her, the shame, like I'm doing something wrong, I need to fix you again. This was breaking the nice guy. And this was huge. It had an amazing result in the end. Now, this doesn't mean that I don't do something to make her happy. If it's right there, it's obvious and she wants that. But sometimes she doesn't. Sometimes she just wants to be given, she wants to be given permission just to be herself. And you don't need to come down to her level to make her happy. If she's sad and you come down to sadness and you relate to her through sadness, you're both going to be stuck in sadness, but you stay up there. You happen to be in joy that day and you're feeling really good and you stay in joy and you respect the fact that she's in sadness. You love her despite of the fact that she's in sadness and you see it as a beautiful part of her life experience and she's going to rise up to your vibration much quicker, especially if you're grounded, you're containing, you're leading, you're flowing. And if she's really being sad, you can walk away for a little bit and come back. You can walk away, recharge yourself, go outside, take a walk, come back and then open your energy up to her again. So how did this realization, well, I kind of understood the principle ahead of time, but where it really hit me was, and this is the story I was talking about. I was on a boat and um, now I had worked this energy. Let me give you a couple stories actually. When I was much younger, I used to date very difficult, challenging women. I used to see this as something really, uh, powerful for me. Like I was learning to be this strong man because I could handle this really feisty, uh, for lack of a better term, bitchy woman. And in reality, that was just me abusing myself and looking for narcissists while I was being the inverted narcissist. And I, and I put a stop to that. But what I did on, in this one relationship was every so, a month or so, the woman I was dating would get become really moody, really bitchy. And she'd get really heavy and really apathetic and she'd hang around in my life and she'd keep trying to pull me down. And there was a sense that, that 
that there was a game or a struggle in it. And what I realized one day was I began to uh, get mad at her. I would get angry. I would come at her really hard. And I kicked her out of my house one day because she had been wallowing in my house for like three days straight. And I said, you know what? You've been wallowing for three days straight. She says, no, I'm just feeling it. I'm trying to get over it. And I said, maybe it was two days or one day. I don't remember how long it was, but it had been a while. And I said, you know what? If you're going to feel like this, you need to go home and do it. Leave. I don't want you in my house feeling like this because you're not working on it. You're just wallowing in it. And she left. She ended up storming out of the house. She left. She was really mad. Now, I came at her with that energy of anger, of power, of cutting energy. And uh, this is when I was much younger. And, and what I noticed was that uh, she, when she came back a couple days later, she was really mad at me. She said, she said exactly that. I was so mad at you. I wasn't going to talk to you for a week. But then suddenly she was sweet and loving and beautiful and happy. And the first time that happened, I didn't understand it. I was like, wow, what is this about? What I realized later as I continued to grow in this area that I was being a man. I was stepping into the tension. I wasn't wallowing in that lower energy with her. I wasn't being a victim. I was like, if you're going to be a victim and you refuse to quit, you can leave. And I called her out on it. I disagreed with her. And she ended up respecting me for it later. We had talks about this much later. And she said she would do that every once in a while and realize that she became more mature herself, that she needed to do this to see if a man would reach out and, and step up to her to know if he cared. It was a weird thing she had going on. And she said, this is how I figured out if a guy cared. I, I gave him all these walls to push through. And when he busted through them, I respected him more. I wanted to be around him more. And she goes, and I hate that I do that because I do it way too much. It's a form of a test. So I stopped dating women like that after that. And we, we became friends and she grew and I grew. and It was all great. And a few years later, not, uh, I ended up on a date with this, this beautiful woman, absolutely amazing woman, but she was also moody. And we were out on a boat. And we were in a big party and everything was flowing. Everybody's dancing, but she's like this moody and grumpy. And, and she was uh, a sweet as pie the night before, but now she's sad. And now she's, there's something going on with her. And I realized it wasn't my job to fix her. Matter of fact, I asked myself sitting on this boat, I'm on this beautiful boat. I'm at sea and we're having a great party. Everybody's having fun. And I said, the nice guy in me would want to fix her before I could have fun. But I, then I said, the healthy, selfish guy in me is gonna just keep having fun. So I started to go around and socialize with people, laugh with people, and she was grumpy. She was sitting there. And I, every once in a while I'd come over, put my arm around her and joke with her for a sec, and tease her a little bit, and I'd get up and go have fun, fun with other people again. I noticed that she wasn't ready to join me. And I was like, okay, you wanna be like that? Go ahead. I didn't push her out. I would look at her every once in a while and I'd go back to having fun. And there was a sense of an invite. You ready to join me yet? I didn't yell at her. I didn't get mad at her. I didn't have to disagree with her this time. I just let her be. I let her be who she wanted to be. She wasn't making it my problem. She wasn't attacking me. She wasn't yelling at me. So I just loved her right where she was at. And I let her be. It wasn't an hour later, suddenly she just started to come out. And where did she gravitate? towards me. She started to get closer to me. She started to cuddle up to me. She was having fun with me. Why? Because I wasn't trying to manipulate her. I wasn't dropping down into lower energy. Now, I could have gotten mad at her like I did previously, and that might have worked. And if she was really being rude and trying to take advantage of me, maybe I would have done that. But she wasn't doing that. She was just being her and going through her experience. So I created a space for her to do it while I had a good time. Made sure she was safe and comfortable and I went and did my own thing too. And it was awesome. That realization really set me free because after that I stopped changing who I was being for beautiful women. And I started truly being free, being more and more of myself. And that realization really added so much more fun in my life, so much more appreciation, so much more joy. So hopefully this story helps you and helps you to understand more of why all the little steps in this video are so important. And with that said, I want to invite you, if you really want to understand this stuff, it's great that you read my book, but if you really want to understand it and you want to deeply get it embodied, definitely check out 
the Fearless Workshop schedule. You can go to thefearlessman.com uh, and check out the events page. We can put a link in here and you can see all the events we got coming up. The Fearless Experience is our flagship workshop where we bring beautiful models in for you to work with directly on all these principles I've learned and worked so hard at over the years. Get them embodied, make them a part of your experience, practice grounding them, practice with turn on with them, practice connecting with them, practice flowing with them, learning to truly be embodied in front of a beautiful woman and to also be able to see it on the screen in front of you and see all your subcommunication, how you may have been rejecting women all these years and how you can turn that around through just subtle changes. There's a lot of 1% cause a huge shift in your life. And in this workshop, you get to see all the 1%. Now, with that said, I definitely want you to check out my previous video called Rejection or Flirting. It's a great video on this principle. It's, it's kind of another way to look at it on is she rejecting you or is she flirting with you and learning not to take it so personal, learning to let it go and flow. And I think if you get these two perspectives, it can really help you to understand this principle at a much, much deeper level. I want to remind you, make sure if you haven't already to like, to subscribe, to hit that bell notification, to share the video, help us grow the channel, help us get to that 100,000 mark, and uh, make sure to comment. I definitely wanna see those comments. I'm always looking at them, I'm always checking them out. I always get new videos from them, new ideas, new realizations about what you guys need. And with that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.